So uh, it has been the poster child, they said all the time, the, the Lorawan mouse trap. So yeah, of course we have a lecture on that. Um, and they, they not only develop uh, the mouse trap, because uh, Martin Kese from uh, he's the founder of Demo Systems, and they're specialized in digital monitoring of pests, humidity, temperature, and all sorts of stuff, um, but also killing mice. So that gives a new meaning to end-to-end -to -end solutions. So please welcome Martin Krizé. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Well, the introduction has already been done. Um, my name was called Martin Crezé, but most people will know me as the mousetrap guy. Um, the mousetrap guy, I'm in the pest control industry for about 20 years. Um, a bit nervous for today because I'm talking to tech people and I don't have any technical background, but I'm trying to um, take you, take you in, um, in our journey of finding the mousetrap. Um, worked in pest control industry for about 20 years and I found the need for saving on labor costs. Um, traditional pest control industry, uh, technicians go out, check mouse boxes, and it takes them about two minutes to go out there, open a box, see if there is a mouse in there and close it and walk to the next one and do the reporting. That's a lot of time for just a split second of information. They do it about 10 times a year or 20 times a year, but then it's only 10 or 20 seconds of information. We thought that must be, there must be a better way to get that information. Um, and then we did start about testing with different uh, systems. Oh, this is, I forgot this one. Um, just the urgent of pest control. This is two articles of the Dutch newspaper from last week. What we see here is um, uh, a supermarket just around the corner that they had to be closed down because of mouse by the government. And another one in Rotterdam where a lot of restaurants and food stores are is closed down too. So urgent of pest control is everywhere. Um, two years ago, 2016, we, um, we started off testing different rodent systems digital rotor systems in the market. And what you see here is um, Zigbee and Wi-Fi systems that you could buy. Um, the range, well, I don't have to explain you about the advantages of LoRa. Um, but what we also found is that um, all the systems on the market were add-ons to traps, and traps are used in boxes, and they're standardized size. So you couldn't use them in a standard box in the market. And an average pest control company has got 10,000, 20,000 boxes in the field, and they don't want to change them. So we sit down. We said, well, we want to find a smart rodent system um, with real-time monitoring. Um, and it has to fit in that standard box. So we came up with the idea. Um, we took the most used mousetrap worldwide the Volkswagen Golf of all mouse traps, And we said, well, what we would try to do is fit the technique in this trap. So it will fit in all that boxes that are used. And we did some reverse engineering on that. So we first made a box, a paper box. This is how it should look like. And the size was the mouse trap, and we couldn't change that. Um, what you see here is that the technicians um, figured out what technique had to be in there. And on the next step, they just took all the components and some glue and a PCB and started to try to get it in that standardized mousetrap. That was not so easy to fit it in. So we had to redesign the whole mousetrap. Um, and that's where we uh, spent like two or three months. It's not so easy to make a mousetrap. It looks, it looks very easy, but it was not so easy. Um, all the technique has to fit in, but still the mousetrap has to be functional as well. Um, we 3D printed them, tried to do it, um, and started to build our own molds to get the plastics done. Um, molding the plastic traps and then get the traps working properly was um, quite an advantage. Um, 
when that was um, fixed, we did go, uh, I forgot mine. We, some other problems we found was the antenna design. Um, we, did, we did some testing with a PCB antenna because we said it has to be small, it has to fit in. Um, and we, when we finally started to do field tests, the antenna was flat on the ground on steel floors and concrete floors and was not working at all. Um, as I told you before, I'm not a tech guy, so we had to find out some things as well when we're doing it. Um, those are the first, uh, the first prototype of traps with, uh, with the PCB antenna. And later, we changed the antennas to, um, to antennas on top of the PCB. And then it, then it really worked when it was in the field. Using a mousetrap, um, where do you use a mousetrap? You use a mousetrap indoor, mostly deep indoor, and then you hide it. That's where the mice are. So that's where it's really difficult to have good LoRa communication or wireless communication um, at all. The mousetrap is on the ground, behind steel posts, behind um, uh, where there is machinery with big electric engines, a lot of magnetic fields. Um, that's where you hide your mousetraps, that's where the mice are. So the antenna and the range was, um, was a real advantage for us to get that right. Um, I would like to show you this. That's something we, um, we walked into. This is a, um, a rat trap. Um, just our technical guys in the, in the lab uh, took this with, uh, with their iPhone. But just to show you what energy is in a mouse in a rat trap. There it goes. This is just a standard red trap. When it goes off, there is a lot of energy going. And what we said, well, we have to protect our old components on the PCB so they don't come off. And the second thing which is important for a red trap is um, it has to be watertight. So what we did is um, we, filled the, um, we filled the whole trap with epoxy except for the antenna area, to make it watertight and to make sure that all the components stay on place. And um, this is what it is. It's watertight, it's IP rated. Um, so if farms use it outside, they can clean the trap. Uh, in, a lot of, in a lot of food facilities where they do rodent control and rodent monitoring, they use um, those steam cleaners to clean, uh, to clean the facility. And um, electronics that you put in the ground and in dirty areas have to be watertight. Um, so that was the design, and then we did go to um, to our first production batches for the field trials. Um, and then we found that there is a lot of labor time on assemble the traps. Um, we first have to stick the PCBs into the plastics. What we do then is uh, filling them up with the epoxy, and after they are filled up with the epoxy, um, you have to assemble the traps all by hand. And um, this is one of the advantages we have to tackle in our uh, second generation trap, to see if we can robotize production. We have done about 10,000 traps now, but um, if we have everything together, it's about 10 minutes of labor cost on a trap, and that's too much. Um, so, after we have the traps uh, assembled, we also did, um, of course, the, all the certification needs. The TOV did the FCC certification, we did the LoRa Alliance certification, um, and when they were all ready, we have finally a product coming out of the factory. So about 10,000 traps we have produced now, and they're out in the field on different box, etc. So the traps um, come out of the factory. So this is the, the mouse trap and the red trap. Um, then you have the hardware, the, um, the sensor, the product. And we also need, of course, the, to, to make sure that um, the, um, the trademark and the patent, every intellectual property is, uh, is protected. And we need an app and a portal so users can use the system. What we see now is that most of the pest control companies and facility management companies connect our traps to their own application software. That's initially also what we wanted. But smaller pest control companies, most of the pest control companies are MAPA companies of two, three people. 
they don't have their own application software. So we have to be sure that they can use the traps and that there is some freeware available for them to use it. So we came up with an app and a portal, just an easy one where we can show people the status of the trap. Um, and what we do, um, they can also upload a, a floor plan where they can drag and drop the, um, the icons of the traps around to show where they are. And what's unique about our traps is that um, there's a few things unique, but what's really unique is that we can do the three steps, three status traps. Um, a trap either is armed, it's opened, then we visualize that in green. If it's closed, so a cleaning lady or someone else kicked the box or a forklift passed the, the, the trap and the trap is snapped, but it's caught nothing, it's communicating a different message as when there is a mouse in the trap, when it's caught really something. And that's important because if you know you're going to be there next week, Wednesday, for a visit, you can arm that trap. But if there is a mouse in there in the middle of the summer, next week, Wednesday, it will be too late. It will be smelly and stinky, and especially in a food facility, you have another problem. Um, and then we had to do field tests just to show you um, about where traps are used, like I told you before. Um, Traps are always on the on the ground, and, and what you see here, for example, is a um, a big factory where they produce um, a feed, cattle feed. And what you see on the pictures is that the floors are metal. Uh, there is big electric engines with magnetic fields, um, a lot of metal in there, and even the walls are from metal. The um, the LoRa network that's been used there was with a uh, a private gateway outside that building. But still, the, the traps had a good result. And this is also one of the pictures you see. There is um, electric fencing with uh, high voltage power on the fencing, and then the traps are just, just below there, and um, between a lot of metal. That's, those are the typical places where they do rodent control. Um, and this is um, something we built in the trap too, something we found when we were testing. Um, if you go out into the field, you bring 80 mouse traps, and you arm the trap, you want to know if it's in range of the network, if the network is there. So what we did, we built in the LED lights. If the technician arms the trap, it starts blinking blue, that means it's ranging, it's trying to join the network, and when it's joined, the lights flashes green. If it's not joined, if it's out of range, it flashes red. And what you see here is the same box, I'm not sure if I have a pointer. Uh, the same box on the left side as on the right side. The box is on a concrete in a plastic um, road and bait box. The trap links, links uh, green, it's in range. And even closer to the gateway, next to the high voltage cables, on that steel floor, is out of range. So this is one of the things that pest control technicians have to be aware of every day. For you is maybe, um, clear that how radio communication with LoRa works. But best technical contritions, um, technicians are normally not highly trained, they're not technical guys. Um, they have a lot of knowledge of rodents, but not of LoRa technology. So this is the things we really have to train them, that they can use the traps and, um, and they will ha have uh, communication with the network. Um, and after all that work, the journey of two years, we did win an innovation award uh, last November. So we were really proud of that. Um, some features of our traps. The ability of, um, of the three catches, uh, the three stages of the traps we can do. Of course, the LoRa range and um, uh, the IP rating, the LED that is um, um, showing you if the trap is in range, yes or no. Um, the daily trap, including the temperature and battery level, that's what we sent. We also sent the temperature. It's not so important for pest control, but it was not a big thing to add the temperature sensor in there. Um, and this is a trap. This is about the story I did want to tell you about the trap.
thank you very yeah. much, not only for this presentation and getting rid of the past, but it's also the poster child of the Laura One movement. Mm -hmm. And you also provided us with some interesting field tests, because, well, if you go in those extreme areas with a lot of metal and wires and stuff, you know, you can see how, how much you can push this technology. So uh, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Any questions or remarks? Yeah, over there. Hello. Who are you? Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm an independent consultant. I have a question. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is that you epoxy in also the batteries? Yes. So, so the, when the batteries are empty, you, have to, you, you get new yeah. traps? The average lifetime of a normal trap is, is about two or three years' time uh, because the spring is on the tension all the time and yeah, that will lose his, his energy okay. after a few years. So yeah, we guarantee at least that three years' normal lifetime, but it will be longer. But we epoxy it in, yes. Okay, and the, and the second question, uh, thank you. Uh, and the second question was, uh, you, you were saying it costs about 10 minutes for somebody to assemble the trap, but is that what it, but it, this is, is it of course, uh, currently offset by cost of the trap or not? So if, you, if, you, if you're able to automate it, you'll be able to reduce the, tra uh, reduce the, uh, the cost of the trap? Yes, yeah. Okay. For so the well, what is it currently the, the cost and what do you think? The traps the are sold for 40 euros now. 40? 40, yeah, okay. 40 euros. And that means in traditional pest control, the return of investment is about a year and a half. Yeah. So these are actually cheaper than most of the LoRa modules that you can get? They are, yeah, okay. but they're still too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have to robotize the, the assembly to make, to make it a big success. It's a business-to-business -business product now. And if we can get it cheaper, then it might be a business-to-consumer product in the future. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed it. This patent still pending. It is, yeah. It is? Yeah. But, but you're already selling it? Yes. Okay. And, and how, how many have you sold? About 10,000. 10,000? Okay, yeah. well, that, that's good. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Questions? Remarks? Theory? Yeah, go over there. Hello. Ah, it's you again. I, I'm Thiago. Uh, I'd like to know how, how you feel that uh, a company that used to do like a dirty job turned in a technology company. So, sorry, I, I missed the point. Uh, I'm asking you, how do you feel that a company that used to do a dirty job is turning into a technology company. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to be in technology now, um, for me. I like it. Um, what you see in pest control that is, has the name of a dirty job, and that industry is changing already to, from the dirty job to more of consultants in, in hygiene, etc. So the technique will bring them, uh, will be a good tool for them to bring that level up in prof yeah. professional. Yeah. It works good at parties where you can now can say yeah. I'm an IoT expert, you know, pest control. IoT Almost, expert. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Last question, remark or ideas, uh, perhaps other use uh, or advice. Cat killer. Oh, over there, <laughs> cat killer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello. Who are you? Hi, uh, my name is JP. Uh, I was just wondering. When you when this thing is, is is finished, it did its job. You have to throw it away. So you have some recycling system in place for this, because I guess here in Europe you have some for, for the environmental rules. You have recycling rules in Europe. Yeah, well, so what ROH what? compliance is there. We have all the documentation. It depends a bit on the country you're selling it. What what the legislation is over there, but it has to go with the uh, electron, electronic uh, waste. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay, so okay. I guess that's it. We're now up for the break. Yes, you are? Okay. Lots of applause. Thank you. Thank you.